Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. asking a heap, but if you can pull your eyes open for a minute, yonder is something you don't see every day, a girl playing ball <laughs> with a monkey <laughs> and a bobcat watching. <laughs> Sorry, old timer, I reckon what you was dreaming had it beat. <laughs> Skipper's getting good, ain't he, Pa? He is for a fact, Ellie. Can we try out for the Dodgers? But I don't hardly think... Look out, here comes Jethro going faster than a hungry dog at feeding time. What's your hurry, Jethro? It's time for the weather on television. <laughs> Since when is Jethro so interested in the weather? Since you seen that pretty girl that talks about it. The one that riles up Granny so? Yes, sir. Granny says she's wrong half the time, half wrong the other half. It's expected that this high pressure system will hold back the mass of moist air moving in across the Pacific. A diggity dog. Ain't she pretty? <laughs> and now the weather forecast for Los Angeles and vicinity. Continue clear this afternoon and tonight, sunny and warmer tomorrow. You're wrong again. It's gonna rain tonight or my name ain't Daisy. Shh, don't you shush me. She's the one that's fibbing. What's the trouble, Granny? Oh, it's gonna rain tonight, and she keeps telling me that it's gonna be clear. She don't know what she's talking about. Shh, I want to listen to my TV, sweetie. By the way, there'll be a full moon tonight. Perfect for a weenie roast at the beach. See you there. You sure will. Hey, Granny, we got any weenies? And now... Good night from your weather, miss. Weather miss is right. She ain't hit it right all week. Well, she's just a young girl, Granny. Well, then they shouldn't send a girl to do woman's work. You got any weenies, Granny? I keep telling her she's wrong, but she won't listen to me. Just keeps on blabbing. We got any weenies, Granny? I don't think they can hear you when you talk back to this TV contraption. Well, then why do they keep asking me those questions? Like, are you tired and run down? <laughs> Just too many suds clog your washing machine. We got any weenies? Yeah, them kind of questions. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I bet you that weather girl will take it right kindly if you called up and straighten her out. Told her it was going to rain tonight. That is, if you're for positive shore. You get her on the phone. I'll step outside and take a look at the signs once more. Hey, Granny, we got any weenies? <laughs> Operator. Well, thank you. Any operator would have done, but since you come on special, I'll let you handle it. I'd like to talk to that girl on TV that says it ain't gonna rain tonight. Granny thinks she's wrong. I can give you weather information. Oh, you too, huh? <laughs> well, all right. Uh, whose side are you on? Hers or Granny's? Now, Ellie, watch close. Because one of these days, you'll be taking my place predicting the weather. Jethro, fetch me a ladybug. Granny, how about them weenies? You can't tell nothing from weenies. Catch me a ladybug. Oh, yes, ma'am. Now, we'll commence with this little bobcat. Have you noticed his fur standing up bushy? Yes, sir. 
And have you noticed him licking again the green? Yes, I have. That's a sign. Bobcat's licking again the green. Come that night, it's likely to rain. <laughs> Did you hear that, Bobby? You're a weather sign. <laughs> so is your rooster Earl, Ellie. Looky under. Is that a sign of rain, Granny? Yes, sir. -y. Rooster crows before he goes to bed. He'll wake up with a soggy head. Tell me some more rain signs. Oh, there's dozens of them. Cats sneezing, dogs eating grass. Sheep's turning their back to the wind. Wolves howling before sundown. Ants banking up the dirt around their holes. <laughs> See that tree over yonder? Yes, sir. You notice how the leaves are turning up, showing the underside? That's a good sign. Hey, Granny, I can't find no ladybug. That's a good sign. Now see if you can fetch me a bullfrog. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Bullfrogs turn dark 10 or 12 hours before it rains. <laughs> but here's a sign that separates the girls from the grannies. My weather beetle. Watch him when he gets a whiff of air. Well, he turned off on his back and kicking up his leg. <laughs> That's a dead for sure, positive, certain sign it's going to rain tonight. This little rascal never fails. <laughs> nice to get his stomach scratched. Can I do it? Easy, easy. Now it tickles him. Randy, appears like that pretty little girl on the TV don't do her own predicting. She don't? Oh, she gets her weather news from the government. Whose government? Ours, I reckon. Leastwise, I got the number where we can call ahead with me. Good. The sooner I set him straight, the better. Back to sleep, Cecil. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Addison. The latest teletype dispatches from all stations and photographs from weather satellite Tyros. Weather ship confirms. Satellite photos check. Barometer rising. Weather balloon A-OK. -okay. Polar stations ditto. All meteorological observations verified. You have processed these data through the computer? Yes, sir. Here's the electronic projection. Ah, what a shame that this brilliant compilation of scientific knowledge and observation will be interpreted to the public in two simple words. Clear tonight. <laughs> Maybe Washington. Chief Forecaster Addison here. How do they, uh, this here is Jed Clamp, but are you the weatherman? I am the supervisor of meteorological observation for this area. Oh, well, uh, I was wanting a weatherman. You're speaking to him. I am Justin Addison. Well, shucks, don't feel bad about that. I'm just a clamper. <laughs> oh, well, uh, here's Granny. She wants to straighten you out on the weather tonight. I beg your pardon? Well, you ought to. Telling everybody it ain't gonna be no rain tonight. It's gonna come down in buckets. <laughs> Madam, you have my assurance. There will be no precipitation tonight. Maybe not, but there's gonna be a whole slew of rain. <laughs> Your granny's on the telephone talking to the head weatherman. I'm sorry, Uncle Jed, but I wanted to tell her I weren't going to be home for supper tonight. I'm going to the beach to roast weenies with that pretty little weather girl. <laughs> granny says it's fixing to rain. You're liable to wind up with a sack full of soggy weenies. But the weather forecaster says it ain't going to rain. But Granny says it is. But the government says it ain't. I say it is. <laughs> Madam, may I ask what leads you to believe we are going to have rain? Well, first off, I noticed the fur on Ellie's bobcat. Bobcat? <laughs> yes, it was standing up bushy-like, and he was licking it again the green. Well, <laughs> madam, you see, that can hardly be compared with our methods. Here, we use only the newest equipment. So did I. This bobcat ain't more than two or three months old. <laughs> I was referring to scientific equipment. Radar, satellites, sensitive barometers. Now, what have you to compare with that? Ant hills, bullfrogs, and sneezing cats. <laughs> I see no point in continuing this conversation. 
Madam, you must realize that weather prediction has progressed far beyond the primitive superstitions in which you seem to place credence. It has become a geophysical science, the science of meteorology, with the world our test tube and the limitless reaches of the universe our laboratory. Are you through flapping your trap? Because if you are, I got something to tell you. And what might that be? It's gonna rain tonight. <laughs> it is not going to rain tonight. I say it is. I say it isn't. <laughs> and Tyros says it isn't. Well, Cecil says it is. Who the devil is Cecil? My weather beetle. And he can out-predict your Tyros any day. Well, madam. Let me tell you about Tyros. As a taxpayer, you have a right to know. After all, you help pay for him. How much did it cost? Tyros number seven was activated at a cost of millions of dollars. For a beetle that says it ain't gonna rain tonight, I want my money back. Really? You had no to yell at him. He's a government man. Fine government man you are. Hey, I bet you can't even find me still. <laughs> Mr. Government man, Granny, we're just funning. She's, uh... Hello? Hello? I reckon you threw the fat in the fire that time. He's liable to come over here and you'll have some explaining to do. So will he. Like what happened to the first six beetles we helped pay for. We helped pay for them? Yes, sir. And I want to tell you something, Jed. I don't know how the government's doing with their other supplies, but they is paying an outrageous price for beetles. <laughs> All right, now, Skip. We's going to practice throwing for distance. Come on, you go way out here in the yard and throw the ball. Come on, no out here now. Keep going. <laughs> Quite a combination. Well, thank you. Well, all right. Burn one right across the plate here, young fella. Come on. Look, hey, that, that's enough. He, he ought to try out for the Dodgers. He's going to. Let me. Oh, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale, sure I'm glad to see you. Looks like we's headed for trouble. What's wrong? Well, Granny's fighting mad. She wants to take on the whole United States government. Well, that would be a one-sided fight. Yeah, that's why I'm glad you come along. I hope you can stop it before the government gets too rostered around. Well, what precipitated the altercation? Well, uh... <laughs> what are they fighting about? Oh, well, I can't seem to agree about the weather. Oh, is that all? Tell Granny to forget it. Too late. They done cross beetles. <laughs> beetles? Yeah, and Granny said something she hadn't altered. Now, if I could just talk to that government man, I think I could head him off, save us a heap of trouble. Do you know his name? Yes, ma'am, but he didn't seem none too proud of it for some reason. <laughs> Ed Weatherman, too. Addison. Right. He's Justin Addison. Yeah, that's the way he seemed to feel about it. <laughs> Tell me, uh, did his pa do something? Oh, he did indeed. Addison Sr. was a pioneer meteorologist. MIT man. PhD, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> Addison Jr. is good. But he's not the man his father was. True. He always lived in the old man's shadow. Yeah, that's the way it happens sometimes. <laughs> well, if you'd like to meet him, we'll drive you down to the office and I'll introduce you. Yeah, I sure would appreciate that. Ellie Mae! <laughs> Ellie, honey, you look after your granny. I'll be back directly. Yes, sir, Pa. <laughs> Wouldn't want granny and that weatherman to tie into each other. Hello there, granny. We'll bring Mr. Clampett right back. Where's it taking you, Jed? Just for a little ride. Well, if you're going to be out after dark, you better put up your roof. It's going to rain. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't, Granny. <laughs> we were listening to the weather forecast on the way over. Continue clear this afternoon and tonight. Drive on, quick. Granny says it's going to rain. <laughs> My beetle says it's going to rain. Ellie Mays, Bobcat says it's going to rain. Mr. Addison. Drysdale, good to see you again. Good to see you, Addison. Oh, excuse me, Chief. I'll just wait in the outer office. Right. 
I'd like you to meet my very good friend, next door neighbor, and largest depositor. How to do uh, there? I'm Jed Clampett. Great pleasure to know you, sir. I'm Justin Addison. Well, now, Mr. Addison, you got to forget about what your pa done. Make your own way in the world. You know my dad? <laughs> oh, but uh, Mr. Drysdale told me about him. What you said, Mr. Clampett, is quite to the point. All my life, people have said, he's not the man his father was. Well, now, you believe him, because he's right. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I think you have something to discuss with Mr. Addison. I do for a fact. Uh, it's about the way Granny's been acting. Well, I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Clampett? Oh, thank you. Did you say Granny? Well, her real name is Daisy. You mean Hurricane Daisy? That's the one. <laughs> yes, she is beginning to give us trouble. We've just started tracking her. I was afraid of that. <laughs> Couldn't you just forget about her? She ain't doing no harm. Not now, perhaps, but if she ever moves north, there's no estimating the damage she might do. I think I can promise you she ain't gonna move north. <laughs> well, I wish the Government Weather Bureau could be as certain as you are. No, I'm afraid we cannot ignore a force as potentially dangerous as Hurricane Daisy. What are you planning to do? Well, we're going to try something new with Daisy. We're going to fly over her with high-altitude Air Force jets. You mean airplane? Bombers, the biggest we've got. And we're going to drop silver iodide and dry ice right in her eye. <laughs> government or no government, I reckon I can't let you do that. Well, with all due respect, sir, I hardly see how you're going to stop us. Well, maybe not, but I'm going to do my best. What are you, a hurricane lover? <laughs> Please, believe me, Mr. Clampett. Daisy is a violent, destructive force. She's unpredictable. She's dangerous. I grant you all that, Mr. Addison, but she's still my mother-in-law. Mother-in-law? The Clampett clan sticks together. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale! <laughs> I'm going to enjoy watching this movie about weather forecasting myself. Yes, well, I hope it will convince Granny. It was a positively inspired idea, Mr. Addison. One picture is worth a thousand words. Do you think this is the way Dad would have handled it? Uh, you got to stop worrying about what your pa done. Make it on your own. You're still a young fella. Of course, you ain't met Granny yet. <laughs> Put up the screen, Miss Hamlet. My goodness. This is a magnificent home, Mr. Clampett. Well, thank you, sir. Now, let me tell you something. My pa lived in a little bitty log cabin with a dirt floor, and I was never ashamed of him, and you hadn't ought to be ashamed of your pa. Ashamed of him? Why, Dad was an MIT PhD. You don't need to spell it out. I've heard ugly words before. <laughs> what do you say, Cecil? How long for it's going to rain? <laughs> Half hour, huh? Thank you. Back to sleep, Cecil. I thought I told you to put the roof up on your car. Now it's only a half hour before it starts to rain. Oh, gra Granny, I'm sure you'll change your forecast once you've seen this film on modern scientific weather prediction methods, which Mr. Addison's going to show us. Who's he? Well, he's the local head of the Government Weather Bureau. So he's the rascal! Could I have a little talk with you? <laughs> now, uh, don't go to mean-mouthing him right off. He's trying to live down a bad family name as it is. He ain't such a bad fellow when you get to know him for a government man. Well, he better not mean-mouth me. Nor my beetle, neither. Uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, this here is Granny, the uh, daisy we had a little misunderstanding about. How do you do? I'm just an artist. How do you? You to me. Apologizes every time. Hi, everybody. Hello, May. Uh, this here is Mr. Addison. Uh, Mr. Addison is my daughter, Ella May. How do you do? Well, just fine, thank you. Mr. Addison is going to show us a movie on uh, weather predicting. 
Well, fine, Pa. But Granny said she done told me everything there was to know about. <laughs> everything. Well, then, uh, just watch for the fun of it. The take seats, everybody. We're about ready to start the picture. <laughs> By way of prefacing what you are about to see, may I say that from the dawn of his existence, man was in awe of the elements. But in time, man's awe of the elements gave way to investigation. And today, we no longer have to rely on such things as prognosticating beetles. Don't you call my beetles whatever it is you just called them. Yes, and maybe you better get on with the movie. I think you're right. It's those Kurtz beetles. Today, weather reports from every part of the world can be obtained almost instantly. And they are the basis of modern weather forecasting. Because weather on Earth is affected by conditions above Earth, race on balloons are launched into the atmosphere at stations throughout the world. <laughs> Instead of looking for weather signs, they's playing with balloons. <laughs> Pressure, temperature, and winds are plotted on map segments, which are joined together to form a large map of simultaneous observations. But a revolution is taking place in forecasting techniques. Electronic computers can analyze data and predict tomorrow's weather map. The frontiers of meteorology have been greatly expanded by the use of Tyros. That's a big one! Here you see Tyros II, 19 inches high, 42 inches in diameter, and weighing approximately 280 pounds. That Tyros may be big, but he ain't half the beetle Cecil is. <laughs> and here is Tyros atop its launch vehicle, about to be rocketed into space. I ain't seen nothing like that since the time your steel blew up. <laughs> Yes, the modern science of meteorology has removed weather forecasting from the realm of superstition and coincidence, enabling me to say with complete confidence, it will not rain tonight. Well, Granny, what do you think? I think she better get her car under cover. It's gonna rain in one minute. Granny, has all this been for naught? Hasn't this mass of scientific evidence convinced you that my prediction is the correct one? <laughs> It can't happen. It just can't. Well, do you still think your Tyros is better than my Cecil? I don't know what to think. Well, come and sit down. And I'll give you a lesson in how to predict the weather. <laughs> Jethro! Granny wants you to come down to breakfast. I'm coming, Uncle Jed. <laughs> you got caught in the rain last night. I sure did. <laughs> Wait down the beach pretty near all night in the pouring rain for that pretty little weather girl. She never did show up. I can't see as a blamer. But she hadn't ought to said it was going to be clear last night. That wasn't her fault. You got any complaining to do, you call Mr. Addison. Well, I'm sorry. We tried to do our best. <laughs> Yes? Well, madam, we were just as surprised as you were. Yes? So, sue us. <laughs> Will you get off my back? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Chief. Yes, we did come a cropper last night, but you can depend on our predictions from now on. I guarantee it. Today? Well, just a moment. <laughs> Hello, Chief. All clear today. You can depend on it. How do I know? My beetle isn't kicking. I... <laughs> Cecil, you little genius. You're going to make me a better forecaster than Dad ever was. <laughs> Why, 
my dad. You should have told me you were a beetle man. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.